scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Yes, it's been a while. It's been six weeks since I recorded anything. And you know, the reason is, it's because I'm supposed to be reviewing the new Doctor Who. And I just can't face it. I've sat down with my notes, written, scribbled, thought about things, given it a lot of thought, given it different approaches, thought about what I can say or do about this story, because everyone else loved it. No, correction. Everyone else seems to have gone, what's everyone else moaning about? This is great. Well, before I start joining the throng, here's me recorded just before Doctor Who was on TV. Now, I better warn you that after I'd interviewed Neil Perriman, basically I got hit by a throat infection, which infected the entire family, and we were all ill basically until halfway through, well, the second week of January which is where I've been, in case you were wondering. Not that anyone emailed. Oh no, no word from you wondering how I was doing or why I hadn't been any podcasts. Oh no, I had one email, but that's just fine. You don't care, you just download these and listen. No, seriously though, I was like really ill. So here's me, in the past, saying what I was looking forward to with the uh, Christmas special. Yes! Yes! Hello. It's the 19th of December, and I'm just recording some messages for myself in the future. I feel dreadful. This is ridiculous. Right. Okay, I've just added some coughing out. Right. The thing for the 25th of December, Doctor Who Day, or as it's known around the world, Christmas. Basically, it's the end of Matt Smith. The things that I want, the things that I want as a viewer... Or as a fan, hell, I'd love some sort of explanation. Some sort of in-depth explanation as to why the TARDIS exploded. Just to keep some people quiet. But to be fair, I probably already know why it exploded. It sacrificed itself. I'm sure that was mentioned in the episode, but I could be wrong. What else do I want? Well, I wouldn't mind some sort of explanation as to why you guys extended beyond 12 regenerations. But to be honest, I don't care. Throw away remarks and Sarah Jane... Morbius, flashbacks, it just doesn't matter. So it just needs to be mentioned in passing when it finally comes up. The business of, well, it's going to be a Christmas story, so it's going to be emphasising on enjoyment and fun. So everything that's in-depth is probably just going to be skated over, which is fine. Right, I'm going to go now. And hopefully when I speak to you again, I'll have got my voice back. Yes! Yes! Now, as we know, the Christmas special is now available on DVD, but it comes with all of the other Matt Smith Christmas specials, which is kind of odd, but you can kind of expect it, because when's it going to come out as part of a box set? Lumped in with the Capaldis? That's just going to be curiously odd, but hey, what do you expect? At least this way it's out there. And you can really sit back, kick back and enjoy this and the wonderments that are the other Christmas specials. I.e. you'll end up sitting there watching A Christmas Carol. I didn't enjoy this. That's one of the reasons I've not podcasted. I couldn't think of anything to say. You see, writing a Christmas special must be an absolute nightmare. It's got to appeal to the masses, i.e. the not we, the people who don't know. They do know. The backstory, they just don't care. It's a bit like the Morecambe and Wise Christmas specials used to be years ago, where people's Christmases kind of hinge on whether this is a good special or not. This is a TV show, for God's sake. Our Christmases shouldn't depend on this, but they do. It's the one thing that keeps you going through all of that tedium with your family, apparently. All of those visits you've had to make, and all of those sitting around eating badly cooked food. 
Except, of course, that's nothing to do with the Christmas I had. The Christmas I had this year was fantastic, apart from this episode. Perhaps I just had very, very high expectations. Actually, that's not true. I had quite low expectations, thinking it was going to be a Christmas story. When you were watching this, did you get the feeling that Matt Smith was originally intended to stay on for at least a half season next year? It was rushed, crammed, jammed with stuff. Techno babble, pointless facts, pointlessness was abounding. It just wasn't my cup of tea. It wasn't a Christmas special, because there wasn't enough Christmasness about it. It wasn't frivolous and yet poignant and heart-rendering. It was just Matt Smith going, Perhaps, perhaps, it's me and ageing makeup. I have my own issues. I don't like it when they age characters up. I genuinely don't. But it started so well. It started with, perhaps, the greatest companion of all time, Handles. Yes, for those of you paying attention, I do like Cybermen. I like Cybermen's heads. And the fact that, well, let's put it this way. The Doctor wasn't carrying around a Cyberman. He was carrying around an iPhone 5. It was Siri. Pointless facts. Pointless reminders. A slightly annoying voice. Not Nicholas Briggs. Yeah, this is Siri. He had an iPhone. His only true companion. Now, you all know how anti-Apple product I am. Hence the reason for Christmas I got a very nice Android tablet. Yay, Nuke HD+. Plus. Sorry. It just really didn't do it for me and I'm not sure why. Yes, I've got issues with Dalek eye stalks coming out of people's heads, but as a kid I would have loved that. It's the 41-year-old in me who's going, that's just stupid. Daleks are better at reproducing people. They were better in 1984 at cloning people and copying them and making them into slaves. They were just better. The explanation for the crack doesn't make sense. Who was Prisoner Zero? Was he a prisoner on Gallifrey? Did the Atraxi work for the Gallifreyans? It just seems to have all been jammed in, crammed in, and it doesn't really make sense because we are looking at it. We're looking at it the way we look at it because we're Doctor Who fans. You know all this already. But everyone else has kicked off and said, we enjoyed it more than we thought. Well, you know what? Smith, you were a decent enough doctor. You really were. You you had some good stories. You were a more than decent actor. Your performances were startling sometimes. You made some great choices, possibly because you're not a long-term Doctor Who fan, but you are now. It's fine. The boldness, very brave decision. Yeah, did you look at the scene with Gillen and Smith and think, they're both wearing wigs, aren't they? Curiouser and curiouser, not for me. Seeing the little Amy made sense. Seeing the big Amy just laid it on with a trowel. I like Jenna Louise Coleman, I do. But I really hope she comes into her own with the next Doctor. Capaldi truly is Doctor 2.1. We're just going to end up having to give up on Doctor numbering systems. Because every time you say the 12th Doctor, a tiny piece in your mind will be going 13th, 13th, 13th. And another piece of your mind will be going 14th regeneration, 1st regeneration, 2.1 regeneration, whole new cycle. He's the 1st Doctor. He's the 13th Doctor. That's the sort of thing that will be going on in your head all the time. And trust me, you know it will because you're a Doctor Who fan like me. So perhaps now that I'm past and I have reviewed this story and I have told you that the DVDs are out... I can move on and go back to good old-fashioned reviewing of Doctor Who, because that's what I'm here for. I'll be able to talk about big finishes because that's what I've been doing. I've been going to work, shoving my headphones on and just working my way through whole series of countermeasures and Gallifrey and the main range. Perhaps I'll go back, if you'd like, to my re-listen to the entire range. Would you like that? I just don't know. What do you want from me? What do you want me to review? Because from now... Until the autumn, it's just me and you guys. So let's have a chat. Let's work out what we want to talk about and do it. Email me and ask me what you want and I'll give it a go. Very soon, I'll be doing a single rewatch of Web of Fear. One episode at a time. Very short podcasts over a period of a week. So until then, be seeing you. And Matt, thanks for all your hard work. (laughs) Ta-ta.
You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its connected properties are copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Hoostrology, a time traveller's almanac, is available through Telos Publishing or Amazon. Visit www.hoostrology.com for further information. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 50 years ago, television producer Sidney Newman went into a meeting at the BBC and said... Hello, uh, I've got an idea for a show. Is it for a soap opera with a realistic East End of London setting, except everyone's miserable all of the time? No. Is it a game show where famous singers sit backwards and swivel round when they hear a good singer? No. Is it like the Muppets? Only not the Muppets, except it is really. Who are the Muppets? Never mind. What is your idea? Well, I see that science and science fiction are all the rage. That's right. Since Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space in April of this year, science fiction has become hugely popular. Which is why I think we should do a science fiction show for children. Marvellous. Is it about a young man who, aided by two droids and a princess, uses a mythic force to free the galaxy from an evil empire policed by... His own father? No. Is it about a spaceship crew's five-year mission to seek new civilizations and life forms in a diverse universe? No. Then Then what what is is it about? about? It's about an old man who lives in a phone box. A phone box? A police phone box. Police phone box. Genius. We'll We'll take take 798 798 episodes. Thank you.